Greetings and thanks for dropping by for the latest edition of Mentor Mike's Market Movie. Today is Friday, August the 10th, 2012. And before we get started with our market replay, we're going to take a look at the charts from this week and some of the trades that uh, have gone before. So, here is the chart from Monday the 6th. This particular day we used the Chaos 3 um, template. So the dashed green line is our trend defining moving average. So uh, the first trade was, of course, a with the trend trade. The second was a transitional trade that was based on divergence. Uh, you, can, you, you can see that there's a lower high on the MACD. Uh, not everything is completely clear. Part of it's off the chart, but we did have divergence here on the MACD, so that's why we took this short trade. And then, of course, this long trade was once again in the direction of the trend, as was this one. Now, this one, this short trade, turned into a transitional move. I was actually expecting it to, to be here. Um, this was based on divergence. Now, this high and this high are exactly the same. But you can clearly see we had divergence on the MACD. So I shorted the market here, and I don't recall if we hit the first target or not. I think we we did, and uh, and then, however, I decided to hang on because what happened was the white stayed under the red, and we got over to this point, and I was watching the fact that the MACD was uh, also staying bearish here. And I suspected that this might turn into a one, two, three top, which it did. One, two, three, and then we sold off eventually and uh, and did all right. But that was the basis for that uh, transitional move. Okay, here is Tuesday, and uh, this was actually the uh, screen capture uh, from the a webinar that I did Tuesday right after the market closed and uh, if you didn't get a chance to see that there's going to be a video link in the blog tonight so uh, check it out this is a pretty straightforward day we had three long trades and uh, that was followed by a transitional move here on the short side now uh, what did we use to justify that well uh, I believe it was a, another one two three top. This one doesn't look like much on the three-minute chart, but I recall uh, dropping down to a one-minute chart where these uh, three turning points, these uh, three Ken Roberts uh, uh, turning points were actually in their own little momentum modules uh, created by the parabolic on the one-minute chart. So that was the justification for this move. Um, otherwise, we didn't have any divergence, but there was the one, two, three. Okay, now we're at Wednesday here. Now we've switched over to the 834-144 template. Uh, simply a with the trend uh, short trade here. And uh, this was a transitional move based on stochastic divergence. Uh, didn't really have any divergence on the MACD on this time frame, but we did on the stochastic. Lower low over here, higher low over here. Plus, there was a teeny bit of stoke, um, excuse me, uh, divergence on the stochastic just between these two um, close uh, lows. We had a lower high, or excuse me, a, a lower low and a higher low over here. So anyway, we had two levels of divergence on the stochastic to justify that long trade. Here we had a one, two, three. Um, and uh, this thing was fairly short-lived, then it bounced up, and then I realized, ah, we were going to have a bigger one, two, three, one, two, three. And so once this looked like it definitely wanted to go south, I was kind of waiting for the uh, stochastic parabolic to get uh, bearish, and so took that short. And then, of course, this was just a with-the-trend trade uh, above the red trend-defining line. Okay, and here is Thursday, and on Thursday I decided that I'm going to uh, use a standardized set of um, symbols on my charts so you folks will have a better idea of what's going on just by looking at the static charts. I've pretty much been doing this all along. Uh, I just haven't provided you with a uh, chart symbol key recently, so I figured I'd do that again. Um, here we've got some explanations of what's going on. 
Uh, the blue line from now on is going to uh, help you see divergence. So here uh, we have a uh, higher low and lower low on the price. Here we have a lower low and a slightly higher low on the MACD. And so that justified this uh, initial uh, move that I thought was going to turn into a transitional move. It didn't, however. Um, and eventually it did after it formed a 1, 2, 3 bottom formation. And so that justified our second long trade here. The yellow arrow indicates a good trade that was not taken because I wasn't there to actually see it. Um, actually, the best move, of course, would have been up here, but that's before I started watching the market. But we had this little uh, corrected bounce here where the market uh, um, went above the blue moving average and then south again, and that was echoed on the stochastic with this little blip uh, that flipped its little parabolic module as well. So had I been around to see it, I would have probably shorted the market at this point, and I'm sure that would have at least hit the first target. So we ended up with these two long trades, and then we didn't have another until this long trade over here, which was a simply with the trend trade. But um, after this transitional move, we actually had two more. This beautiful down move, at the time I was, I was tempted to take it, but... I couldn't really justify it. I didn't see a 1, 2, 3 top, and I didn't see any divergence on either the stochastic or the MACD. So I said, well, the deal's a deal. Let's, let's just write it out and see what happens. And, and so it, it dropped beautifully, but I wasn't on board. And then it turned around and went back up. Now, I guess I could have said this was a 1, 2, 3 bottom, possibly. It was echoed a little bit on the stochastic, but I chose not to. And I thought, well, let's wait until we get something else. And so... Uh, missed this down move, missed this up move, and then it came down and bounced off the trend-defining moving average and finally got one last uh, with the trend shot here. So it was a profitable day, but uh, there was a lot of sitting around, unfortunately, because of these transitional moves that didn't have any good justification. Now, here's an interesting chart I've been uh, creating. Uh, I'll call this my delta chart. And um, we're looking at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, Friday's not on here because um, the uh, data was paused when I uh, created this chart. But as you can see, I've been sort of uh, marking the high-low turning points, and what I've done here is there's no pre-market or after-market shown here. Um, the uh, template for the chart uh, on the time scale is simply from 6.15 a.m., to, uh, I'm sorry, 6.30 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. Pacific time, which is the time that the actual stock market um, is in session, more or less. And so um, that way you can see just the daily session and you can see the turning points. Now, the turning points on here do not always completely coincide with the ones on the larger chart uh, where I am uh, confronting the data from the pre-market and the aftermarket. But... Um, this is basically how it looks, and as you can see, uh, whatever the last turning point is on one day, uh, it's going to be the opposite the next day. So that's something that can help us out in determining uh, what's coming up tomorrow. So this is Thursday, as I said, and you can see the last turning point was a high. So that has a strong uh, suggestive value that our first turning point today, Friday, is going to be a low. Now, Indeed it was, because here is Friday, and in fact this was one of those days when there was only two turning points, low and high, and uh, here we had simply uh, three with the trend bearish trades, uh, and then we had a transitional move above the red trend defining moving average. Here's the uh, divergence on the price, higher low, lower low, and on the uh, MACD, we had uh, lower low, higher low, and the same on the stochastic, lower low, higher low. So uh, this trade was justified based on the divergence as we broke across. Um, this was simply a with the trend bullish trade. Here, however, I reversed position, and that was based on what I perceived to be this one, two, three top formation. So I thought, well, perhaps we're going to have another transition here. We are, after all, kind of in the, in the window of opportunity for the second turning point. So I thought, well, 
maybe this thing's going to sell off. So I actually got short based on the one, two, three, and eventually we hit the first target, but then uh, found support on the trend defining moving average and started to go higher again. So I reversed once again uh, once I got uh, this signal on the stochastic. And then we finished the day very strongly with this uh, rally into the close. So this is kind of an unusual day. And so this will be the one that we'll replay today, Friday, um, August the 10th. So let's get these charts out of the way. Everything else is queued up here and we're ready to go. We're stopped here at 4 a.m. And uh, the ideal time to have entered this trade on the short side would have been right here when the price was breaking south of the trend defining red moving average. Likewise, the stochastic uh, breaking below 50% and the MACD below zero. But we kind of missed that. It happened a few minutes before uh, our start time. But I'm going to take a chance here and see if we can uh, follow up, even though we're probably a couple of ticks into the trade already, and that can often make a big difference. But I'm going to go ahead and get short, and we will put our arrow in here, starting at our 4 a.m. time and um, let's see what happened to my um, my little um, gizmo um, I'll have to pause this for a moment and uh, oh no here it is wait a minute is that it? yeah there we go um, I was hiding him while we looked at our charts um, okay we're ready to go I'm queued up at 4 a.m. So we've taken our short trade. Here we go. And before we goose up the data feed, we'll move that back over where you can see it. And <clears throat> okay, hit the first target. Didn't move the stop, so I'm going to do that manually. I have to cough here. So okay, hopefully I've gotten the frog out of my throat. And we're going to bring this down to um, two points above our entry. Actually, we can bring it all the way down to the parabolic. And now we'll start up again. <clears throat> Ten clicks gets us 50 times normal speed. This doesn't look like it wants to go very much lower. Okay, stopped out. Now, we have to be careful because it still looks bearish here. We've got the white moving average under the red, the, bl the blue is under the white, but the price has popped up and flipped the parabolic. <clears throat> and as you can see, our oscillators are starting to look a little bit oversold here. So, um, if the signals are there, we have to take them. So what I'm going to remind you is that, remember, it's buy low, sell high. So if we're going to get short here, um, we want to get short when actually the price is uh, about as high as it looks like it's going to go uh, in this bullish parabolic, and then it's likely to turn around and, uh, and sell off. Uh, there's no basis for uh, thinking that we're going to have a transitional move here. So... Uh, let's just move forward. I'm going to 
slow down the data feed just a tad here to 30 times and uh, we'll see if we can get a good time to go long green short rather let's see if the blue moving average goes a little bit above the white yeah about like that now we might have just picked up a tick there but sometimes that's what it takes and let's get short and start her up higher still up to the red but we did hit the target first target anyway and we can move this down to parabolic Okay, stop that again. And we're finally starting to see a little bit of divergence here, but uh, let's see what's going to happen. Watch that stochastic. Is it going to break above the red or is it going to curve back around? Looks like it's going to curve back around. See that? That means it's using this 50% level as uh, resistance. And you can see we're coming back down here. Also, what do we got in the way of uh, maybe some Elliott Wave stuff? I'm thinking maybe one, two, and then. This is probably not three, um, but it could be. And then we have four or five now. This is going to have a more complex four and then a five, I would say. And this high is not higher than this high, so the uh, wave four did not take out wave three. So we could be okay. What's going to happen here? Well, finally. Okay, hit two targets. That's the way we like to see it. Oh, stopped out. Now then, I'm thinking one, two, three, and then here's an ABC4. And this complicated mess, I think, is wave five. And now this thing's going to go up. And we've got divergence big time.
and even on the short term here with the stochastic. So we're almost to a crossover here and we've got parabolic flips on the other two panels. So I say we get long. Okay, we stopped out. Price activity is on the trend defining moving average, and white is already above the red. Looks like the stochastic is finding some support at the 50% level and has now made a bullish hook. So I'd say buy low, sell high. In this case, buy low. That second target. Yes, we are. I'm gonna flip that parabolic. Yes, we are. Now, this is where I chose to reverse, and let me show you why. This thing looks like it wants to sell off. This thing is just uh, inches from a crossover, and we've got a, a bearish hook on the stochastic. Plus, we've got this going on. We've got a high, which we'll call number one. We've got a low, number two. And we've got a secondary high that did not take out the first high. We have your basic Ken Roberts one, two, three top formation, which suggests that this thing is going to sell off. So rather than keep riding this trade, we're going to hit the reverse button and reverse our position we 
we got the white curving down, but the price doesn't seem, seem to want to get below it. We've got the crossover on the MACD that can't quite make up its mind, and we had one and just lost it on the stochastic, but Got full on crossovers on both oscillators now. Let's get that blue below the white. Yeah, that's what we want to see. Alright, hit the first target and finally move the stop. Notice how that red moving average, that trend defining moving average, is acting as a zone of support in this case. It acted that way over here and it's doing the same thing here. Now, that being the case, the fact that it's bouncing off of there, we've got a little bit of curvature here, but this is the biggie. This stochastic has is, is got a very definite bullish hook here. I think this is as good a sell-off as we're going to get out of this thing. And I think we would be wise to reverse yet again. And away we go. Now, in order to do the reversal, you got to have plenty of margin in your account because at one point the platform thinks that you've got two complements of contracts on there. So, if you don't have enough margin for twice the, the usual number of contracts that you trade, you're going to get an error message when you try to reverse, in which case you're going to have to close the first trade and then re enter in the opposite direction. The oscillators are dipping a little bit, but uh, white is still way above the red, and the blue is even above the white, so things may turn around. Parabolic's finally caught up to the stop. Okay, love it when we hit that second target. That's where there's some serious money there. Don't always hit that third one, but that's nice too. The first target keeps us from a loss. The second target is our bread and butter. And the third target is the frosting on the cake. A lot of gastronomic analogies there, huh? Must be hungry. Okay, we're about to move the stop into profit territory. 
And we hit that final target. Draw the arrow to the appropriate length, and let's run out the clock. Okay, now, move this guy slightly out of the way, and here's our low, here's our predicted time. And you could argue that we have a, a, a high and a low for our center, but not really, since all the activity takes place above the trend-defining moving average. It's really just the two points today, one low and one high. Now, Based on this, we should expect that our first turning point on Monday um, will also be a low. And uh, we'll see how that plays out. Now, the delta phenomenon actually counts the days that where the market isn't actually trading. So the turning points uh, actually uh, go on even on Saturday and Sunday. So. Uh, if that's the case, however, they should add up in such a way that we should still end up with a low on Monday. Okay, so this is how the day played out. We had three, six, seven trades. And if you were trading with 150 contracts, you could have picked up $40,500 in just one day's trading. Um, not a bad little haul. So something to look forward to, boys and girls. Okay, that will do it for this week. Come back and see us next week. Remember, in tonight's blog, we've got the chart symbol uh, key uh, to remind you of what these things mean, and we've got the link to Tuesday's webinar. Uh, so enjoy, and we'll see you next week.